All right, so I'm in the garage and I'm gonna give a tour of my car because I'm bored and there's nothing for me to do. The door opens with the key on you. My key's in my pocket. Hand just goes behind the thing and it opens. To lock it, I just put my finger on the little indention. I got the red interior. My husband's been in my car. I can't reach my wheel. Let's turn it on. He made my steering wheel, wheel crooked. So, this is basically the only car I've ever owned that's this high-tech. And I'm still learning all the buttons in this car. But first, I guess we'll start with the door. I got my settings, one, two, three. I set my one for me, three is for my husband. Got the switches there. I guess I should turn the lights on. The lights are just, you just tap them and they come on. I set my um, rear view mirror. I got the button to open and close the garage. I'll show that. And it opens and close the garage. And okay, so I got these buns here. They're for the um, different temperatures of the seats. This is the driver's seat. I can have hot air and cold air. This is for the air. And there's three settings to it. And then I have the heated seat. I just learned that I had air conditioning in my seats too. But for the heated, I have to press that one. And the passenger side has the same one. the air and that's the heated pretty damn cool and this is for the steering wheel I think it only does heated I think it does both oh my bad I just learned that <laughs> the steering wheel has air conditioning and heated I did not know that This button is for my rear view shade. If I push that, that goes up. And it automatically goes down when the car is in reverse. And it'll come back up when the car is in drive, if I have it on. And let's see, all the high tech stuff. I have the, um, I have the, what's it called, the phone charger, let me show you how that works. So I have to take my phone case off 
for my phone to fit in the phone charger. But I just, I turned it on first, it's on. When it's charging, the light changes yellow. And you can see that it's saying it's charging. Pretty damn cool. And so, what else we got? Um, this is the radio, I can change the media. Um, if I had a CD, I can change the track. This is all the air settings. This sets the, um, the fan to low. This one's high. This changes the ventilation. And I see the ventilation change on there. And that's how that works. Um, this is the defrost for the front windshield rear windshield and the volume knob I got the park brake down there and I have the trunk and the gas button I have the heads up this is the heads up display where I turn it on I'm not sure if you can see it You can see it better at night. My car is telling me it's not ready to drive. I'm gonna turn it on because the air is not cold. I want to straighten up my steering wheel. I have the parking sensor. It shows on there. And it also shows on there. It shows me how close I'll get. And it'll be really loud when it gets to red. There. That's what that is. favorite part of the car is learning how to do the menu in there. I still don't know everything that's on here. I'm still learning the menu settings. But I know pretty much majority of it. The sensitivity tells me or is a setting that tells me how close I am to a car. I can set it to I'm not sure what the feet is, but sure you can see that. I can sit how far or how close I want to be to a car if I'm in cruise control or regular driving, I guess. The BSM, this one right here is my blind spot monitor, telling me whether it's on or off. I don't know what the PKSA is yet. This is my parking sensor, telling me how close I am to an object, or it tells me whether there's a car coming behind me, and it notifies me to stop. And if I don't stop, the car automatically stops for me. And it also tells me when there's a pedestrian behind me. I've had the car stop on me twice automatically already. The first time it scared the shit out of me because it sounded like something in my car broke. <laughs> but it's just a really quick reflex on the brake system. settings so go to vehicle settings that's my blind spot monitor lane assist first one's the lane assist I can it lets me know when I'm outside of the lane and I can correct my driving and this is the blind spot monitor I'm not sure what that is still learning on that one 
the kick sensor to my trunk is on. I don't know what that is. My scheduled maintenance, it, t it tells me when the car is scheduled for the next maintenance. No, I don't want to reset it. Oil maintenance. But I'm still learning all of this stuff in here. Meter settings. Uh, I don't really know how to use this one yet. I just know everything should be on. That's pretty much what I know in the meter settings. But that's the menu on the speedometer. And I like it because it switches back over. Isn't that cool? I think it's badass. <laughs> and I have auto high beam lights. I can I can switch it to um, automatically come on by itself if I press this button and I push the level lever forward. I think I push lever forward and then I push the button. Let's try it. So high beams are on now manually because the levers push forward. To set the auto high beams, I push the lever forward and I press the auto button right here. And then that B tells me it's set to auto high beams. Which is pretty damn cool. I'm like, oh, this is awesome. awesome. <laughs> These are just my regular lights. I usually have it set on auto so it can just come on by itself when it knows it's nighttime. On the steering wheel, I have the cruise control setting right here. I would just press that button and set my speed. If I want to increase the speed, lower the speed. And this is the same button as on the menu as um how close I want to be to a car when I'm in cruise control. Um, I can't remember the feet that it sits to. I think it's like 100 feet, 50 feet, and 25 feet. And what's cool about this on cruise control, the car automatically slows down when it notices it's getting to that set foot to the back of the car. So that's pretty damn cool to me because <laughs> I'm always riding people's asses and it slows my ass down when I get too close. And this is also the same lane assist button here. I can turn it off and on. The mode button is for the radio. Whether I want to be, whether I want the CD. The mode goes from CD to radio, Bluetooth. AM, FM, and it goes to SM radio. I mostly have it on SM radio. And this just, um, this the arrows just switch the station on the radio. And this is for when my phone is hooked up on Bluetooth. I can voice command, tell it to call somebody. I can answer the phone with the phone button volume up and down this is the menu button that was doing that I was showing earlier with that and on the menu when it's on I use these arrows to navigate the menu still learning things in there there's a lot to learn um let's see I got the CD player down here I'm really glad this car came with a CD player because I know times are changing and technology is improving where music is on Apple Music and you can buy iTunes and crap but I still love my CDs and I'm glad it still has a CD player. So and then here this is my mouse pad. It's very sensitive. The old the old model mouse pad is actual is an actual mouse on the thing, but this year's model they wanted a 
a touch touch mouse so there that's that one the mouse I can go if I press menu all the things come up I have the navigation on here the audio I can switch from radio to SM radio to CD Bluetooth from here as well I can call people on my phone if the Bluetooth is hooked up. The apps, I don't really use the apps because they're saying they have to update it. It's not updated with this model of the car yet, so I can't use any of those apps. But they said it's coming, it's just very slow. Uh, I'm not sure what projection is, I'm still learning this menu. I don't know how to use projection. There's info, there's setup, this just sets up everything on the car on this menu over here too. There's the clock, language, the theme, I can do all that from here. Bluetooth, audio, phone. I can change the navigation, settings. Wi-Fi. Um, I don't know too much in this menu. I can change my traffic routes, tell it to avoid highways, accidents, all that good stuff. The quickest route to get there. And the little menu on the side here. This is the navigation symbol brings up the map this is the music menu brings up the music I'm listening to I don't really know what this one is I guess it's telling me I just now clicked on it I guess it's telling me how much miles I go per gallon and right now it's 13.7 I've never used this I've never looked at that before but that's pretty cool Ah, I didn't know this one did this too. It tells me the temperature on each passenger where where it's at. I didn't know it did all this. It even shows me the seat and the steering. That's pretty damn cool. And then this goes back to the previous menu. And if I want to get out of it, and go back to my navigation, I just press map and it goes back to the map. And then here we have the sunroof. And I either want the window, if I want the window just to go up, press up and down. It also has the emergency SOS settings, which is cool because if I'm ever in trouble, I can always press that button. I think it's free for a year or something like that. I don't know what the door button is. Let's find out. Oh, I think this is set up to, the door button is to set up, I guess, the lighting for when the automatic lighting when the door opens. Yeah, that's it. But turn it on. Let's see. I've never set this up in my car before. Okay, so it does go on with the middle one. Anyways, if I want the rear view, not rear, not rear view, sunroof to open all the way, I just press this button. If I want it to close, press the close button.
pretty much the car. Um, I also, the car has rain sensing. Like when it rains, the car knows that it's raining and the windshield wipers will come on automatically. And this is the sensor. This thing senses that it rains and the windshield wipers will come on. And it can just be like a little drizzle and my windshield wipers will come on. Sometimes I'm like, it's raining? It doesn't look like it's raining. And then, I think that's it. Um, well, also, I guess I'll show the features of the car. So, I bought this car because, of course, I needed a new one. But I also wanted to buy the car that had all the features that I wanted in it. And mainly it had to have the triple beam headlights and the phone charger and uh, red seats. I wanted red seats in the car. If it didn't have red seats, I wasn't going to buy it. But this car came with, this car is fully loaded. It comes with everything that the ES350 F Sport could ever have. I wasn't looking for that, but that's what the car came with and it had all the things I wanted so I had to get this one the car also has comes with the light up LED Lexus lights on the side it's all over the door seals passenger side also I know the passenger side doesn't have it it's just the driver side didn't know that And the car beeps when I the, the key's not inside and the car is on. But the trunk has the... The trunk also has the Lexus LED lights. The, clo the trunk doesn't close without the key on you. Passenger side has it. And I wanted the car to have triple beam headlights. And that's what I got. Because I'm a blind bat at night. My eyes are getting worse, so I needed triple beam headlights to see better at night. But that's the car. ES350 F Sport 2019 I forgot one of the most important things the sport mode <laughs> my car is a sport mode so I need to show that so my sport mode well it comes with the paddle shifters too I can do manual shifting if I go to the standard do the standard setting. It also shifts in auto drive too. I can use the paddle shifters on auto or the sport mode. So to turn on the sport mode, this one's pretty cool. I want you all to see this. When I'm driving the sport mode, I would press this knob. This knob right here does all that. So pressing, there's a button on the side pressing in is normal and the dial the speedometer changes there's normal and there's custom and then if I want to change to the first sport mode setting there's two sport mode settings change the sport mode I turn the wheel up one up one sport s that's the first setting for Sport Plus, I turn the knob up to. It will say Sport S Plus. For Eco, I turn the knob down. It's so cool. <laughs> I love that the speedometer changes with every setting. And then back to normal. 
So that's normal. The button pushed in normal. I just like playing with it. The sport mode is the most awesome shit ever in this car. <laughs> I love driving fast and growing up with my dad, we all drive just like him. So the moment I got this car, I had to test out the sport mode. And to break a car in, you gotta at least hit 100. So the first sport mode, I tested it out in a marathon. There's this long highway that goes, there's one way in and one way out of the Keys. I was close to Key West. I, Marathon is near Key West. So if you know Key West, there's a highway only one way in and one way out. And there's a wall medium all the way down from Key Largo to Homestead. And that's a pretty good bit of a drive. So the sport mode, that's where I tested it out. I went 100 on the first sport mode. But man, when I went 100 on the second sport mode, woo, that shit was fast. I think I got to 100 in like five seconds, maybe even less. I'll time it next time, probably do a video on that too. But yeah, that's the speedometer and the different settings.